ahead of Jesus. Good morning to the Sunday School. It's a blessing to be here this morning. We thank God for this day, a day that we've never seen before and one we shall never see again. Amen. But thank God that He has brought us to Amen. it. Amen. And uh, we pray that He would uh, safeguard us through it. We want to be careful to give God praise for all of our uh, members here at Galilee, but not only here, but to every church that is open in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for His safeguard, for we live in a time where man has forgotten about God. In doing any and everything. Uh, life means nothing to them. And we are careful to understand scripture when it says man ought always pray. And that's what we need to do. Because I heard the Chronicles say over in 7 and 14. If my people mm. who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray. See my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal the land and I want you to understand that the land that we live in not just the United States but the world is sick brethren and we need God to sin heal in our way amen let us pray father we thank you now for another day one that uh, was not necessarily appointed to us, but you brought us to it. Thank you, Lord. Last night you watched over us yes. all the night long. Yes. And somewhere early this morning you touched us Thank you. with the divine finger of your love. And for that, Lord God, we are grateful. We give you praise and we give you honor and glory. Now, God, thank you for... Uh, Pastor Coleman, whom you put thank in this mountain. Yes, Lord. Thank we you. pray, God, that you will strengthen him Gird him up on every side. Give him a word, God, that will cause men to want to know more about you. Yeah. Bless the sick and the shedding, O oh Lord God. And for those that are hospitalized, we pray that you will see their healing their way. For you are a doctor that has never lost a patient. You are a lawyer, Lord God, that has never lost a case. So we thank you. We pray now that you will allow me to step aside. Stand up in me. Speak that which you will have your people to hear. And to this end, we will come to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. We have a very powerful lesson this morning. But I want to show you something in this lesson. There are several things in this lesson that are controversial. And we want to clear up some things in today's lesson because the topic of my lesson is the word that became or becomes flesh the word become flesh remember here the writer is John but he who he speaks about is a different John because John the writer writes this giving us an idea of what John the Baptist witnessed. You, you know John the Baptist. He's the one that was living out in the wilderness and eating wild honey and dressed in camel hair and all of those things. John says in verse 1 here, and I need you to hear this very carefully. It says, in the beginning mm -hmm. was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's, that's so much right there. Because... John had to understand, uh, we know John to be a witness, but here's one of the controversies. John did not witness the word. John witness was for 
of the coming of Jesus Christ. But we know Jesus Christ to be the Word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, right. Because the Bible here says, in the beginning. And, and, and that phrase is, in the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. John was neither there in the beginning, but the Word was. Uh -huh. Watch this here. The Word was always here. Because the Word stepped out of eternity. And the Word is going to uh, come into a virgin Mary. Not Jesus. The Word. And when He is born, He is given the name Jesus. Uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't jump into Mary as Jesus Christ. Because remember, He was told who oh, He's going to be. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, uh, teach him. But the, so John did not witness the word because, uh -huh, and, and I didn't show you this, because the word is eternal. The name Jesus was not eternal because it wasn't from the beginning. Uh -huh. But I, I, but we don't. Uh, that's why Paul tells us to step. We don't want to get confused. Uh, if you believe in the Word, you believe in Jesus. Huh? Go ahead, brother. Why did verse 2? The same was in the beginning with God. And, and, and we, need to, we need to understand this here. The Word was always here. Or Always with God. How do you know that? Because the Bible says there are three. Huh? There's the Word, the Spirit, and God. Huh? Why is this it? And I need to show you something. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, God said, let us. Make man. Huh? The question is, who was God talking to? Huh? That thing he just made to the Trinity. It does. Right. But who was God talking to when he said, let us make man? Huh? Thank you. <laughs> the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not angels. Because angels cannot create. You know why? Because angels was created. That's right. Uh, well, watch John. Watch John. Watch John. He says, he said, but the same was in the beginning. In other words, uh, watch this here. The word was or is co-equal with God. us to be confused but the, the Holy Ghost is a unique person God is a unique person and Jesus Christ is a unique person huh? they're all three they are unique individuals but we get hung up on God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's true. But they are distinct individuals. Yes, sir. Uh, to the class, uh, I was told this once, I'll never forget. Um, uh, a brother, somebody told me that he said, God's real, God's speak, God act. That's right. God the Father real, God the Word speak. That's right. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you all that. I'm going to show you all of that in this lesson. That God spoke, the Word act. Huh? I'm going to show it to you. And, and that's, uh, we want to expand our knowledge so that we won't get hung up on something and think that we are 
we don't have the full God. Watch John here. He said, all things, watch this here, all things was made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Hear what we're talking about. God spoke the Word. He said, let there be. Huh? And the Word created everything. Huh? And God said there was nothing made in the universe that the Word didn't make. I have put all under the subjection of my Son, the Word. Uh, watch this. Then he says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Well, what, what, what you talking about, John? You remember over in Genesis where uh, the, the Bible said God stooped down in the dirt and he formed man and he blew into the nostril mm -hmm. of what he created and it became a living soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was when the word, uh, meaning he has or he brings life. Uh, you cannot have life without him. But I'm going to show you that we rejected him in this same lesson. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. What that, what that word comprehension really means is that uh, Jesus or the Word came and it dispelled darkness because we were living in darkness. In other words, we didn't have an understanding of God. But when Jesus came, he brought illumination. Huh? Living in darkness means that I did not or they did not understand. They did not uh, comprehend. Uh, and so, and darkness cannot stand in light. But light can stand in darkness. Because when light comes, darkness got to get away. Uh, darkness could not subdue light. But light subdued darkness. It shows you the power of the difference. Because light represents our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Darkness represents evil. Everything that's bad happens uh, as we know it today in darkness. Huh? He says, hear it. Here it is, this man, he's coming on the scene now. In verse 6, uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This denotes John the Baptist. Not the writer, but John the Baptist. God sent him. And we have, uh, understand this here. John the Baptist is six months, as we understand it, older than Jesus. So, John is able to witness Jesus. Not the Word. Jesus. We have to, maybe we call it a play on words, but Jesus, because the Bible said, God said, this is who you're going to call him. His name shall be called Jesus. Uh -huh. huh? It's not his first, uh, and Christ is, by the way, it's not his last name. Christ is his position, which is the anointed one. John came to tell us about the coming Messiah, who is Jesus the Christ. Uh, he is a witness, and he bore a witness. Now the difference is this here. John witnessed where witnessed Jesus, and then he was the witness to tell others about him. You, you remember John said, there's one coming after me whom I'm not able to uh, loose his sandals, uh, and he will do great things 
I will baptize you with water, but he that cometh after me shall baptize you with fire and of the Holy Ghost. That's the one. And then I have to show you this here. In when Jesus grew up and went to the water of the Jordan to get baptized, to show you the, the, the distinct difference, the Bible says the heaven opened up. And God spoke to John and said, Hey, John, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. God was speaking. Huh? Jesus was in the water. And he said, There will come a dove that will light on him. That is the Holy Ghost. So we have to accept what the Bible says uh, to be true. That's the whole thing about this here thing called the Word of God. We have to accept it as truth because it's the truth that will set us free. Why did John said, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him may be saved. Watch this now. He's talking about Jesus Christ, not John. John said, I witnessed the fact that if you believe, you heard it, Roman, 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt shall be, be saved. saved. By no other name shall man be saved, but at the name of Jesus Christ. John said, if you accept Jesus, you can be saved. The problem exists is that the, uh, the Jews did not accept him. But the Bible says he, Jesus, came to the lost tribe of Israel. And they rejected him. Therefore, his ministry expanded to all nations. And those that accepted him, I'm going to show you what they got. They got some. Huh? He said, uh, he was not that light. John says, I wasn't that light. I'm not that light. There's one coming. Huh? He said, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. In other words, every individual has the option to be saved. They're at everybody. All should not be. Huh? But all will not be because all will not accept him. Hmm? It's, it's, a, it, it's not rocket science. We already know that because the Jews didn't accept him. They knew about him, but they didn't accept him. Huh? He said, I came to my own and my own will receive me not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And here comes the gift that he gave. But as many as received him, that's the that's the key right there. As many made that received him, gave he what? Power to become what? Sons of God. Huh? In other words, you, in order to become a son or a daughter of God, you must receive Jesus the Christ. That's why he gave us communion. Huh? This power that he gave us was the ability to do great things. It allowed us to become in the household of faith because we are doing this by faith. I accept him by faith. I, I don't have to go nowhere and get it. I don't have to go to a church and get it. I don't have to go to a synagogue or temple. All I have to do is confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. Huh? But as many as received him, to them he gave me power to become the sons of God. 
even to them that believed on his name. And it, it, it makes it, John keep stressing the point how to get it is you got to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. huh? And we have to be careful. You, you notice it didn't say believe on the word. Because in, when John came, the word was already here. Mm -hmm. John witnessed the Christ that was coming. So when he said that he was a witness, he witnessed Jesus Christ. It's, it's like uh, Steve. Steve couldn't witness me because I was before Steve. He can witness Matthew Jackson. But he couldn't. And the only reason he's able to do that is because after I'm here, he now know me. But the word of God was always... Huh? As a matter of fact, before John was even thought of, the word was. There's never a time that the word of God wasn't. When eternity passes away, the word will always be. Watch it. <coughs> Excuse me. Which was born, watch the language now, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Talking about the Word. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Messiah. Talking about Jesus Christ. Mary's baby. The meek and humble lamb. Uh, him who was slain before the foundation of the world. You see how it takes you places and it makes it seem so confusing. But God here through John said, He... The Messiah or the Word which became flesh is not of blood. It's not of the will. What that means, Mary and Joseph didn't have a couple of minutes of pleasure. It was the Holy Ghost that overshadowed Mary and dispelled in her the Word or Jesus Christ. And He wanted, God wanted us to understand that it was not by our will and not by nothing that we did or could do. It was His uh, power and His power alone. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. Why? Because God needed us to understand His love for us. He was too holy. And He wanted us to understand that He was not like us. But He was greater than we are. And He wanted us to understand that Jesus is not just some run-of-the-mill individual. Man didn't have anything to do with it. You know, when man has something to do with things, they tend to want to uh, own it. Yes, sir? Um, but to, uh, back to the uh, verse, uh, I'm, I'm a bit, well, not fully uh, that or where I should be, I guess. I'm a bit concerned. I mean, I have a question. Um, 12 and 13, mm -hmm. uh, it says, uh, gave he them to be. Uh, Gave them power to become sons of God? Yeah, yeah, yes sir, yes sir. But even to those who believe on His name, that's a continuation. That's them who believe on His name, not... Even the Jews. There were, see, watch this, what, it, what they're talking about is, uh, even though the Jews rejected Him, there were Jews that received Him. Yes, sir. And He gave them and other nations, or when I say other nations, I mean other people, such as the Gentile, uh, power to become sons of God. And you look at it in today's uh, vernacular, he who believed in God, he gave them power. He who confessed him as Lord and Savior, them he gave power. 
In other words, everybody won't get it because everybody's not going to accept. You've got to receive him. You've got to accept him in order to receive the gift. Uh, yes, sir. No, no problem. I very much follow that. And, and, and that's why uh, that next verse said, it, 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 it had nothing to do with, like you said, what you were born in. That's right. Uh, on who child you is. That's right. It ain't, ain't got nothing to do with what you desire to do it or what you want to do it. It's not by the will of man. That's right. You know, it's not by flesh and blood, but it's by the power of God. You know, and it's, it's old boy, you would say, if God don't draw you, you know, like the word will draw you or drive you. That's if right. If it ain't drawing you, you just can't say, well, that look good over there. I just go in and get in this crowd. <laughs> and, you know, you won't be a part of the crowd just because you got in the crowd. So, so it has to be by the will of God. I mean, God has to... Uh, 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 boy, boy, you give you salvation. You can't get his salvation based on, you know, your desire to be saved. You That's right. You can't say, well, I want to be saved, uh, Brother Carter. So I'm saved. But that's what I want to do. And, and watch this here. Yeah. Watch this here. Jesus said it like this here. He says, uh, no man, that include boy and girl, mm -hmm. no man cometh mm -hmm. unto the Father yeah. except by who? Me. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus don't, if you don't accept Jesus, you can't get to the Father. That's why it says, heaven is closed up to all except him who believe on the name of Jesus Christ. But teacher, when we, when we talk about uh, in verse 12, uh, uh, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I may be off track, but I'm trying to connect with, with verse of the tenor, but uh, when you receive him, that gives us power. That's right. Uh -huh. We can't get, if we don't receive him, we don't have the power to receive him. In other words, we don't have the power to act as we should act or be as we should be Absolutely. if we don't receive him. But if we receive him, then he's going to give the power is there mm -hmm. to walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. But if we don't receive it, then you you don't have the power. But, but did he not give us all dominion? That, that. Different. But let me show you something. Let me show you what that power is. Once, what do you get once you uh, accept Jesus as your Lord and say, you get the what? That's him. That is the power of God for mankind. He is the paraclete, him who stands beside you. He guides you. He, he enables you. That is the power that God gives to them that accept him. You can't get the Holy Ghost except you accept Jesus Christ. Huh? You just can't say, I want the Holy Ghost. No. The power gives you the ability That's right. to be able to acquire the Holy Ghost. Because once you quite it, once you receive Jesus, the Holy Ghost is yours. He's not standing out there side on the sideline waiting for you to say, okay, now I believe in God. Where's the Holy Ghost? According to Paul. Once you accept him as your Lord and your Savior, you have the Holy Ghost. You know, uh, I tell you all the time, the boy used to always tell him, you need to go and tear it. No. There is no such thing now as tearing. Tearing was in the upper room. Because Jesus said to his disciples, go into the upper room and tear it until you be endued with power after which the Holy Ghost will come. Well, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is here. You don't have to wait for it. You just have to receive him. He is the gift of God for them that believe. That's just like saying, but teaching you uh if he come knocking, it's up to you to open that door Absolutely. to allow him to come in. That's right. That's right. The word, he says, was made flesh. And, and we understand that, that he was born of a virgin Mary. 
shape and, 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 and watch this. Let's not. We like to use this as a, a point of reference. He's all God and he's all man. True enough. But remember, he was born under the law. In other words, he was born subjected to the law. But he never broke the law. He abided by the law. How, how, how do you know? Come here, fish. Give me uh, $15 so I can pay taxes. Because that was the law. And Jesus abided by the law. Now, he did something supernaturally. Because if he had not, I would tell you, if, he, if, if I could do that, I ain't trying to be funny, but my pocket would be deep. Every, every time you look for me, Brother Steve, I will be over at the Black Warrior. Call it fish, come here. Or I go to the, better yet, I go to the Atlantic. Or to the Antarctic where the whales are. They, they, hold, they hold a lot of money. <laughs> huh? He wants to show you how omnipotent he is, how omniscient he is, how powerful he is, but he's still bent under the law. Why? Because he was the one that the law pointed to. And when he said it is finished, he did for the law what God required. He says, and I know it's time for us to and the Word was made flesh and dwelt. He, he, he lived among us. He suffered like we did, and even greater. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John says his description of Jesus Christ, and make sure we understand that He is the only begotten Son of God. He is the embodiment of God. He is, he has the same attribute that God has. He has the same power that God has. Huh? He is all God and all Son and all Holy Ghost. All that. What did your lesson title was? What was your title? Not yours, Christine. The reason for it all. I'm sorry? The reason for it all. The reason for it all. Absolutely. And remember, when we study this here, John talks about, uh, he gives us what we need to understand about the birth of Jesus Christ. And for us not to be confused about the fact that the Word was always here. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When it says the Word became flesh, that's when the shift took place. He shifted from the Word to Jesus Christ. Because he was, uh, uh, John says, he was the forerunner. In other words, he came before him. And we understand that Mary and Elizabeth was cousins. Therefore, G, uh, uh, John was Jesus' cousin. And he came before Jesus to be a witness for Jesus to the world. And he lived a strange life. And he preached repentance to the nation. It was said that he preached a sermon for 20 years. Repent, repent, and be baptized. Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you. Amen. God sanctify you. This is our prayer. Thank you, Brother Teacher, Amen. for those profound words. Yes,